Today we're gonna to go through how to grow ginger, how to plant it, and how to harvest it. Everything you need to know. And all our ginger that we grow here all came from store-bought. We're gonna go completely over it on the proper way of growing it because there's so many ways you can grow it that it just won't work, including the mistake that I made here. So here's ginger growing. Now I had some small pieces I put in there and I grew this set in a dish pan. They're about four and a half gallons, these dish pans, and I love them. They're under $3. Now here I'm removing the ginger. Now I'm gonna tell you, I should have pulled it out earlier because as soon as the foliage dries up, you really wanna get it out if you're in a wet area. Normally here in Southern California, we're not in a wet area, but we have been raining, it seems like for weeks and weeks. We'd have a dry spell and then it would just rain. And that is too wet for ginger. Ginger is a tropical plant. So though it likes the water and it needs to be kept damp, the thing is it also wants to be warm. So when our weather is cold and wet, and we've been getting in the 30s and 40s, that is not good for ginger and you can lose it. So I was close, but it was okay. So here you see me pulling out my ginger. These are the rhizomes. The leaves are long gone and they look good. Thank goodness they did not rot. Now we're gonna go over everything today. So when you finish watching this video, you should be able to grow it no matter how you get it and you'll know the ins and outs of all of it. Now here I'm just going through the soil. Why? Because I make my own soil. You know how that is. So I'm gonna separate now the ginger that was in there. They're pretty big. Now keep in mind, I only put in very small pieces. A lot of people put in the whole hand and the that's kind of defeating the purpose of you wanting to eat it if you're gonna put the whole thing back. I have found, after growing it for years and years, you only need a little bit. Having a small amount in a pot, they just take off and they just quadruple in size. So I keep a lot for us to eat and you can freeze those as well as planting small pieces. It works really good for me. So let's wash this off and take a look at it in a minute. And you'll see how many, that little piece broke off of the big one, but there were two big pieces in there and then the small piece came off, but they grew really nice. And next time, like I said, I will make sure I get them out because we're just not used to all this rain they would be better, but I could have lost them. They would have rotted, but they didn't. Keep an eye on that soil, because that soil is amazing. Now what you wanna do is wash them off. I wash it with water, clean water, to get all the soil off, and don't throw that soil away, because there might be great microbes or earthworms on there, so you can put that in another pot or wherever, even in the ground for your other plants. Now once you wash it off, you can either plant some of it back if you keep it in a dry area, if it's still winter and cold, or you can freeze it or do what you want with it. Some people dry it. We don't dry our ginger, but we just wash it off really good because I want to make sure it's clean and take a look at the prize that I grew out of a couple small pieces. Now let's get to planting. I'm going to plant some of it back and then I'm going to use the rest. So I'm not going to freeze it. Now here is what I'm not going to do this year. I am not gonna plant it back in a dish pan. There's nothing wrong with it, but I find that I grow my ginger much better in flower pots, well-drained flower pots. It just works better for me. It's easier to handle too. I like tipping them over at full harvest. So I take my soldering iron here and it's plugged in to a little power unit and I'm making holes, pretty big holes because I don't want any water to retain in the pots. Now remember, ginger wants to be watered. It likes water, but it needs well-drained soil. So it wants to be wet, but it doesn't want to be bogged down. So you make your holes really good. So whatever you have in there, as far as your soil or your compost, it drains well. So those holes will do. That will be really good. Now this is how I made the other soil. And you'll see that what came out was amazing. It was all compost that was broken down. There were no earthworms anymore in there, as you noticed when I emptied it. Now I put leaves on the bottom, paper, whatever you've got is what you wanna put in there. Now ginger, when it's growing and turning green, the leaves are coming out, it's a heavy feeder. I will say here that I have grown it in straight dried leaves that fell off of trees. I did it with the pepper tree, all those leaves, raked it up, 
probably picked up a little bit of native soil underneath as they raked it up, threw them in pots, and they grew. So what they need is some sort of nutrient. So they got enough off the pepper tree leaves. Here I'm putting in compost. You see what I'm putting in? All kinds of stuff. I'm putting in leaves and carrots, peels and green peels and banana peels. Paper went in there, everything, even paper towels if you've got. And then I kind of mix it, I'm layering it. I'm putting that soil back or that compost that came out of the one I just took out. I'm giving it a chance to break down again, which is gonna be fabulous for this plant to grow. So I'm adding in as many leaves as possible. You might say, well, wait a minute, the ginger is not gonna have room to grow. Do not kid yourself, all that will be gone in two to three months. By the time that ginger starts to grow, that's already gonna be broke down. And earthworms are gonna find their way in there, microbes are gonna be in there doing everything, and it's gonna make that soil so rich for ginger. And that is what ginger likes. Now, if you're starting off and you don't have any leaves or anything like that, you can use straight potting soil for the whole thing. It's just that with soil going up in price so much, why not make our own? Mother Nature makes it every day. So here I continue to layer whatever I've got and I wanna bring it almost to the top, but not quite. Now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna use some potting soil right now. Now I'm gonna make a good layer, probably about three to four inches. And that is where I'm going to put my ginger that I'm going to grow. So here I'm gonna look over the ginger that I just took out and I'm gonna pick out where it looks like it might start growing right away. Even though it's still early, probably won't come up for a couple months because we've been so cold, I'm gonna pick out a few pieces. Now there's no reason to put the whole thing back. If I'm putting the whole thing back, then what am I growing it for? So I'm gonna pick out two or three small pieces. Now with ginger, it actually likes to be in a small pot. It likes to push on the sides as the soil tightens up around it. If you plant it in a big area, sometimes it doesn't grow as good and you'll get far more when putting it in a pot. This isn't just my experience, this is other people's experience too. Now that's all I'm gonna put in here, two small pieces. And with the rest, I can decide later if I wanna plant more in another pot. Now look at here. I'm going to just cover my ginger now, maybe about an inch, so it's just not poking out. Some people bury it, and I'm not sure why they would bury it six inches deep. When I see people burying it that deep, I wonder if they're really growing it, because we grow a ton. I have found that that may not work. It might rot before it starts to grow. I have found that being close to the surface works really well. And if they start to poke out as they grow and you don't wanna see them, put some more potting soil over it. Now the rest of it, I'm gonna store it in either sand, you can store it in potting soil or even a clean type of kitty litter with no fragrance added to it, plain clay kitty litter. That will work and then I can decide later if I wanna grow some more, eat it, or even freeze it. The reason we have to protect it is here in Southern California, they'll just dry out too quick so the air will dry them out. And whatever way you wanna store it, make sure you put a little bit of water in there just so it's not completely dry and then label it. Make sure you label it because you might look at that flower pot in the next month and think, oh, there's nothing in it, maybe I should plant something. In the meantime, your ginger is dormant, sleeping away, getting ready to wake up as soon as the weather warms. They like it warm at night, you know, like in this upper 60s or 70 degree nights. Then they will burst into life. Here I'm going to put it on my deck, this particular pot, and it's going to be under the eaves, so it's not going to get rained on, and I covered it with tulle, so nothing will bother it, and it will just sit there. And once in a while, I might put a little tiny bit of water on there just so it won't dry out it should do really, really well just sitting there. Now here in Southern California, we're quite dry and warm. So ginger likes morning sun. It doesn't like late afternoon. It's too hot for it. You'll have to see with your area where is the best place to grow it. So sun in the morning, shade in the afternoon works well for me here. So to recap, you can get ginger from the store. If it's been irradiated, it may not grow. If it's got a growth inhibitor, all you have to do is soak it overnight. Soaking it in a bowl with clean, fresh water may get the growth inhibitor out. And then you can grow it. Try to see if you can find organic and see if you can get it in the United States or your country. Because if it had to be shipped in, there's a good chance they irradiated it. That helps preserve it as well it gets rid of all insects. Sometimes if it's irradiated, it may start to grow, and then later on, it just will not grow. It will have a few sprouts, and if it stops, that means it was treated. 
I have had luck with the grocery store one. I have been growing tons of ginger and turmeric. So all you need is to get started with a couple good pieces and then you are set to go, just like us. We started with a few pieces and then it just bursted into life. So we've had it growing everywhere. And then come winter, it dies back. That's what it's supposed to do. And that is the time to harvest it. Of course, you can grow ginger and turmeric all year and dig into it when it's still green and take pieces off and push it back under the soil. So you can harvest it anytime you want. I hope I've answered all your questions. If not, ask and I'll try to answer them. Have a great day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. What would you rather have? A piece of ginger or a piece of broccoli? No, nope. she wants that. Not the ginger, huh? Okay, we know what she likes.